Well, the Q2 numbers for Tesla are in and they are fantastic. Let's have a look at exactly what Tesla was able to do in Q2 of 2019 in terms of production, delivery, and what that means for the future. Let's go. Tesla was able to produce 14,517 Model S and X combined and 72,531 Model 3 vehicles, giving them a total production in Q2 of 87,048 vehicles. On the delivery side, things were a bit better. For Model S and X, Tesla was able to deliver 17,650 vehicles, and on Model 3, they delivered a whopping 77,550 vehicles. This gives them a total delivery number for the quarter of 95,000 200. Their previous best was in Q4 of 2018 with 90,700 vehicles, so this was a landslide victory. This was a huge step up from that, and probably getting close to their maximum output that they can even possibly do from the current factory that they have. Now, year over year, we're looking at 134% increase. That's 134% above Q2 of last year and 51% above Q1 of this year. So tremendous results. These are stellar numbers that really no one else in the industry can even come close to touching. But how is the rest of the year looking and what does it mean for future years if they can sustain this level of output? Well, my previous forecast for 2019 was 380,000. I'm reducing that slightly because of the dip in Q1 with a new forecast of 372,000 vehicles in 2019 as it stands today. Looking ahead to 2020 with the China factory coming online, I'm keeping them at about 564,000, which is what I had them at previously. And this is because I believe the dip in Q1 of this year was due to them figuring out the logistics of shipping these cars overseas. And the only thing that could really derail this would be the upcoming models that they're going to be building stuff out for. So for example, the Model Y is coming very soon. After that, the Tesla Semi, the Tesla Roadster, and then the pickup truck, of course. So there's going to be a lot of additional kind of work that needs to, to go into the Gigafactory. And depending on where they actually assemble the cars, there's going to be a lot of uh, investment and, and time and kind of attention taken away from the current level of production. So that's the only thing I could see that would really uh, kind of cause any turbulence for them down the road. So this begs the question, what about the competition? Are they going to play any role here? Well, the Jaguar I-PACE is not selling very well. And from what I understand, the dealerships that sell it are not very interested in it. Not my personal account, but from several people that have emailed me that after going there. The Audi e-tron just had a global recall of nearly every vehicle and the fix won't be back until August. So that certainly uh, stalls them out a little bit in terms of uh, this competition that's coming for Tesla. And then the Porsche Taycan, which does look really promising, I'm very interested in this one, is only really slated to produce about 20,000 vehicles per year. So while it is kind of a high performance vehicle that has a shot at kind of taking away some of those luxury customers from Tesla, in terms of the overall impact that they're having, it's it's probably not going to be anything significant or it doesn't appear that way as of now. In fact, if you think about it, it's kind of crazy that no other EV on the market today even beats the specs of a 2012 Tesla Model S. So it's kind of a joke, but not really that if the other companies trying to make EVs try really, really hard, maybe in three years, they'll only be 10 years behind. That's kind of the real scenario, the real situation when it comes to competition for Tesla. Now, it doesn't mean that other people won't buy other cars instead of a Tesla, which is really kind of how you look at it. But if you're just talking pure technical specs from an EV standpoint, Tesla is at least 10 years ahead. And it shows, if we take a look at the Model 3 versus the other cars in its class, the mid-sized luxury market in the US, they have already doubled all of the sales of everyone else in the category. It is pretty insane how far and ahead they are than anyone else. And this is just updated as of May. It's not updated as of the latest numbers we have, which literally just came out today. So this gap is just gonna get wider and wider as the year goes on. 
And pretty soon, the Model 3 is actually going to pass the Model S as the most delivered Tesla on the road, and likely will hold that crown until the Model Y hits full-scale production down the road here in a few years. And in terms of the Model S and Model X having not a great amount of sales, I do think that at this point, they're maybe becoming a bit long in the tooth, and people are really anticipating a big update soon. There was a recent video from my friend Kim over at Like Tesla that talked about it. They're looking at three electric motors over 400 miles of range, improved performance, most likely an updated exterior, that's my speculation, and Electric already had previously released some of the interior updates with a single screen to kind of match what the Model 3 has. I'm not a huge fan of that, I really like having dual screens, but perhaps they could have a heads-up display or the minimal amount of information in front of you, that way when you're driving, you don't have to be forced to look over and all that. I mean, I, I especially find it useful when navigating somewhere, just having the next turn kind of drawn out for me right directly ahead instead of off to the side, but you know, you teach their own. So I'm thinking that Model S and Model X will come back online or the sales will start to pick up once we have those updates, which if I'm just speculating here, why not? Let's assume that we'll see that or I'm gonna put my money on seeing that at the pickup truck unveil, which is supposed to happen this summer, likely this fall, more realistically, probably this winter. So at that point in time, we'll know all everything there's to know about the truck, obviously, as well as I'm guessing we'll see something with the SNX refresh at that time. And that's where sales, I think for those models will pick back up. Because remember, these are the flagship vehicles. And in fact, if you even look, the uh, SNX performance models go exactly one mile per hour top speed over the Model 3 because it has to, they have to maintain that, <laughs> that kind of flagship premium status. So I think we're going to see some big updates there and maybe even soon some new battery tech. So who knows? And as I mentioned, the Gigafactory in China is coming online just faster than anyone could have imagined. Photos are coming out every single day. Elon have, have even had a funny joke about it recently, thinking that it's the most documented factory build out in history. Now this factory, which really just began full scale development this year, is looking to scale up to producing 3000 vehicles a week. Now that is tremendous. And in addition to that, the way that this is working is that Tesla owns this factory outright. It's not co-owned by a local business that's also owned by the government or any of those kind of things. This is a wholly owned US company in China making cars for the China market, which is the largest electric car market in the world. And I mean, these photos are just tremendous when you see how quickly, and literally just a, a few months ago, this was just a dirt field. And now it is looking a whole heck of a lot like a factory. So going into 2020, the China factory is gonna play a big role in Tesla's overall production. Now in the US, this really won't matter because these cars are being sold in China, but possibly down in Australia, other Asian markets, places that just have been kind of underserved by Tesla to date will get a big boost from this. Now, they also did announce recently at the annual shareholders meeting that they're gonna be building a new European Gigafactory, which presumably would follow the same model. That is, that materials come in as raw of a form as makes sense, you know, such as battery cells probably come in already made, those kind of things, but everything else comes in kind of raw and then out come cars on the other side. This is Tesla's vertical integration model, one that just really allows them to be super efficient when it comes to actually producing these cars, which if you look at all the other competition and all the other car companies trying to emulate what Tesla's doing are really struggling with. So it speaks to the merits of this approach and one that I think the Asian markets and possibly the South Pacific markets are gonna really benefit from starting next year. So that's it for this, just a quick update on these numbers. I wanted to put them in context for you, kind of give you a, a broader sense of what they mean. The Tesla team is doing an incredible job and I think they're gonna continue to do this based on their statements. It looks like this is going to be just a kind of red letter year and going forward, it's gonna really push this EV movement even faster and faster than it's already going. So who knows, maybe the Tesla Model 3 will finish out the year again in the top five spot, basically holding on to the only American car in the top five selling cars in the US. That would be a tremendous thing. And uh, you know, 4th of July is coming up. So why not? That seems, seems like a good thing. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of these numbers. If you have any, any details or things that I missed, please leave me a comment down below. I'll hang out there for a little bit, uh, kind of chat with you guys, figure it out. And uh, thanks for watching. So don't forget, when you free the data, your model follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. 
Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. Now, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, become a part of the Teslanomics community, consider joining us on Patreon. So what we have set up are different things and ways to engage, such as a Discord group, which is like this chat room, that is just the folks that support the channel through Patreon. I'm on there almost daily, engaging in conversation about how Tesla and others like them are changing the world around us for the better. So if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and go to patreon.com slash and I hope to see you there soon.